Chapter Twenty Five of Tilda Jane's Orphans. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Brandon. Tilda Jane's Orphans by Marshall Saunders. Chapter Twenty Five. Hank breaks important news to Grandpa. I ain't sharp in a business way hank was saying gloomily an hour later now when perletta announced her stupendous news to me i should have said let things go on according to the old footing till i get dad used to your transformation scene instead of that i booby-like said that she could at once enter on her new state i declare that i and my name ought to be changed to a great big you i wish women didn't always want to hurry nature now there's that table set for dinner with a place for perletta and she's helping tilda jane with the victuals out there and keeping one eye on me to see when i'm going to tell dad i might as well make the plunge twill be my second this morning and the uncongenial element down below ain't half as uncongenial as dad's cold soul will be a pity i'm monkeyed with andy but i've got aboard him that girl's eye is like a gimlet and twould be poor policy to offend and hairless and parlor boarder to be dad he said aloud and approaching the old man don't you want to take off your specs and put down your paper and talk to your son for a spell no i don't said grandpa crossly and burying his head more deeply in the siskasset daily times would you take a short walk sir to admire the beauties of nature asked hank the young corn down at the back of the Meliquans is growing finely, and the noonday sun is shedding a lustrous glory on the farming land behind us. Farming fiddlesticks, said Grandpa decidedly. Sir, said Hank sharply, come out back of the barn a spell. I want to talk business to you. Grandpa stared at him over his glasses. Be you foolin' yet? No, I ain't said hank crossly come on father i've got something to tell you the old man laid down his paper and took up his cane the word business had excited his curiosity hank's unfortunate reference to tilda jane as a lady following him the night he came home had aroused a suspicion in poor old grandpa's mind that hank was contemplating matrimony nothing could allay this suspicion and it was with sudden meekness and pathos that he strove to read the enigmatical expression on Hank's face as he conducted him toward the group of lilacs at the back of the garden. Where are we going? he asked submissively. To the bench near the pig's bed, replied Hank. They won't listen, and they'll keep listeners off. Look here, father, he said. When Dilson Sr. had seated himself on the rustic bench facing Dodge and Grappler's lair in the grass, have you noticed anything funny about Perletta lately? Oh, Perletta, exclaimed the old man in huge relief. No, I guess not, he said indifferently. Only that she gads powerfully and leaves the work for Sissy. She's given me warning, said Hank solemnly. She's going to stop being our hired girl. Good riddance of bad rubbish, said Grandpa. She ain't the only fish in the sea. But Tilda Jane likes her, said Hank. She'll have to unlike her, said Grandpa calmly. Did you care to know why she's giving up her lucrative position? asked Hank. Not particularly still i'll not close my ears if you say it she's come into money said hank with a gravity befitting the occasion 
money hey how much sneered grandpa two dollars or three maybe she's got nine hundred dollars a year said hank in the gallant tone of a champion nine hundred dollars repeated grandpa quickly who says she has nine ain't it nine cents hank lost patience i say sir he exclaimed you ain't fair the girl's a lack wit but still the lord made her and we're bound to give her some room on his footstool not shove her off who's shoving asked grandpa unamiably i ain't but when a hooty dooty tells me the moon is made of green cheese i say prove it prove it and i'll believe you bring me down a slice let me stick my teeth in it i know cheese but i ain't gonna imagine it a bright thought struck hank wait a bit sir he said i'll be back in a minute and he ran toward the barn perletta he said sticking his head in the little rough house where the cooking stove had been put up tilda jane said you'd bought a fur coat for father is it so yes it's so she said slowly would you mind if i showed it to him for an instant i'll not let him keep it i just want to convince him that you've got money he's an agnostic this morning don't know anything i guess you can do anything he likes with it she said agreeably make the old man keep it if you kin i expect i'll have to battle him to get him to take a present from me run get it like a good girl said hank Berlina went with lumbering haste to her sleeping quarters and returned with a large cardboard box under her arm and here's a writin she said extending a piece of paper to him old man whiting gove it to me hank took box and paper and read aloud this is to certify that miss perletta garraby of ciscasset maine has become the recipient of a yearly sum of nine hundred dollars according to the will of her late uncle henry garraby of toronto canada joseph whiting you never asked me for that she said pointedly no replied hank i believed your word but perletta we must have patience with my father he's old and not very strong i ain't hard on him she said patiently you understands him if you didn't jump on him once and so often we'd all lead the dog's life hank grinned and scuttled back in the direction of the lilacs grandpa still hard and unbelieving sat leaning forward with hands crossed on the top of his cane his old shrewd eyes bent on the sky as if begging for some luminary to descend to convince him of the truth of hank's extraordinary statement about perletta hank flung the box on the seat beside him tore off the string and throwing aside tissue paper wrappings and scattering mothballs far and near drew out a handsome black fur-lined coat with a deep collar and held it up before him there's a slice of the moon sir grandpa looked at the coat at hank at dodge and grappler who had drawn near and were delightedly devouring the mothballs then he said well it ain't green cheese sir said hank seriously and he turned over the box cover look here march and son furriers ciscasset you know the standing of that firm do you suppose they'd trust a girl like perletta with that coat unless she had money to pay for it it ain't worth nine hundred dollars said grandpa stubbornly that girl has got her purse crammed with money said hank and she goes to see mr whiting on business you know joseph whiting used to sit on the same bench with him at school said grandpa only he made a fortune and i didn't had more brains i suppose i don't know 
does he say perletta has money hank impressively presented him with mr whiting's assurance of perletta's truthfulness grandpa stared at it long and earnestly then he said it might be a forgery i don't know i don't say it is still it might be hank laughed irresistibly you know it ain't father how could a girl like perletta counterfeit a signature like that and what would she want to do it for come now be reasonable i haven't talked to mr whiting but perletta tells me he's been to canada where her uncle lived that left her the money you'd better believe he looked into securities and all that it's a sure thing if he's in it how did that goose girl get a rich uncle asked grandpa contemptuously well i don't suppose she made him i expect our creator ain't above giving her rich relatives same as he gives lots of other poor folks it's a fine coat said grandpa caressing the fur of the garment that hank had thrown on the seat beside him must have cost a good bit over a hundred dollars she'll look like a fool in it though it's for you roared hank and may i be forgiven for saying it but you don't deserve it for me said grandpa mildly surely not she don't like me yes she does poor girl said hank wrathfully she's ignorant and she's ugly but she has human feelings she's all alone in the world and she's pining for someone to hang on to she wants to adopt sissy i suppose if we'd let her have her she'd take her and those pigs and set up housekeeping for herself she ain't gonna have sissy remarked grandpa in alarm she can have the pigs he poked them contemptuously with his stick if they ain't dead from eating them poison smelling things oh my soul cried hank and going on his knees he wrestled with dodge and grappler to dislodge the mothballs already in their mouths and seeing he could not do it he rapidly picked up those remaining on the ground what's in them dad suppose they die won't i catch it there's tar in em and camphor and crude carbolic acid said grandpa slightingly but i fear there ain't enough of the latter to carry em off we'll hope for the best said hank with a sigh they're pretty tough now dad to come back to business perletta wants to go on living with us but as a boarder we'll have to get another girl the question is are you willing if you're going to raise cain about it she'll have to get out i have no objection to her staying said grandpa coolly if she'll pay good board and keep herself quiet she'll have to come to the table with us not while i'm alive said grandpa bringing his stick down firmly on the ground when i'm dead you can have all the idiot asylums and states prisons you like at the table i won't care boarders don't usually pay high board and live in the kitchen said hank dryly at least if they have i ain't heard of the custom the kitchen is good enough for her said grandpa shortly or the cookhouse now that we've no kitchen give her an inch and she'll take an l in my old school books there was a story of a rabbit that borrowed her neighbor's home she got in and they never could get her out mr waysmith advised her to board with us remarked hank diplomatically mr waysmith said grandpa haughtily and what has the likes of perletta to do with mr waysmith she went to him and he ain't too proud and mighty to advise a poor servant girl in want of a friend mr waysmith is his own master said grandpa tranquilly i ain't got no jurisdiction over him but what will he say when he hears that you've refused the poor girl's request asked hank keenly won't his good opinion of you suffer grandpa showed his first signs of weakening i ain't refused anything let her board and give good money to help with the housekeeping i don't care 
she can have a little table in the corner of the dining room if she likes it don't matter to me she's got to sit right down with us said hank decidedly grandpa stared up at the sky and hummed a hard little tune i see what it is remarked hank with pretended desperation i've got to get married a woman at the head of this house would keep things straight no one minds me and you're going to break up the family for if perletta goes tilda jane will fall ill of worry and maybe die grandpa's stubborn old mind was shaken to its foundations a daughter-in-law is a whip that i can always crack over his poor old head when he's too ugly hank muttered son grandpa was saying in a shaky voice married life is a dog's life i'm getting quite fond of dogs said hank shrewdly there was only one woman worth marrying and i got her grandpa continued dejectedly now dad said hank firmly you know you're saying what ain't so sis Cassid is full of nice girls looking for husbands and there's more out in the country i know a girl out karakunk way that's a good girl and a smart girl i've only to hold out a finger and she'll come and she'll take good care of you too grandpa was so overcome and so frightened that he went all to pieces his old hands were trembling though he leaned hard on his cane to steady himself son he said in a voice that was smooth and mellifluous i guess perletta might stay i got a turn against her for running off with my pup but i ain't blind i see there's a change in her she ain't so ugly good for you dad and hank gave him a resounding and affectionate slap on the back i thought you'd come around and dad i want you to understand this i'm not one to make you do anything against your own interests you know i think a lot of sissy and i'm beginning to tolerate perletta but the both of em rolled together don't count with me as much as you do you're my father see Give me your arm, son, said Grandpa blandly, and we'll walk to the barn together. I'll tell Perletta she can stay if she behaves herself. See, those pigs are trying to keep Andy from going to their bed. Let him smell round it if he wants to. To please his father, Hank made a great show of forcing Dodge and Grappler to abandon the determined attitude they had taken namely that handy andy should not inspect their freshly made straw bed the mischievous little dog scampered over the bed bit and pulled at the straw then leaving the indignant pigs to rearrange it he scuttled after grandpa and hank what about the coat sir asked hank glancing at the parcel he carried in his hand perletta said you could keep it now if you liked give it back to her said grandpa gently cold weather hasn't come when it does we'll see it's powerful handsome twould become me hank with some trepidation watched his father approaching the cookhouse perletta stuck her red face out when she saw him coming and set her teeth for contempt patronage or whatever was to come perletta said grandpa shortly my son says you wish to board with us i'm agreeable to it if you'll hold yourself ready to leave at any time if it shouldn't be convenient to keep you so far so good and hank breathed easily while perletta flushed with pleasure i'll not give much trouble sir she stammered i'm pleased to bide you seems like home folks here all of yees you've got to be in early nights said grandpa strictly and not to gad too much oh powers of contrariness muttered hank dad would empty all the boarding-houses in the state in about ten minutes and not have too much company grandpa was continuing and not be sassy and keep the pigs out of the way of strangers as much as possible 
yes sir said perletta but not quite as meekly as she had spoken before and if you have callers keep them in the kitchen what about the new girl asked perletta brusquely where'll she take her callers in the woodhouse replied grandpa promptly perletta frowned and hank to effect a diversion surreptitiously kicked over a pot of soup that had been set outside the cookhouse tilda jane and perletta both sprang to it in dismay and grandpa's lecture was cut short mumbling to himself he went to sit down in his big chair and think over this last domestic problem when dinner time came he waved a hand grandly toward perletta's place at the table hank was suffering from suppressed laughter but sobered himself at a beseeching look from tilda jane perletta contrary to his expectations scarcely opened her mouth during the meal except to eat grandpa kept a sharp eye on her all ready to jump verbally if she did anything out of the way she neither put her knife in her mouth nor smacked her lips the girl's got more sense than he thinks hank reflected surveying his father from under his eyelids she's watching sissy like a cat and is doing whatever she does she'll talk in time but just now she's too overcome by the grandeur of her situation to do anything but hold her tongue i wonder how she'll put in her time now and i wonder what mr waysmith had in mind when he said he had a plan about someone to teach her a big thing like that could never go to school and sit in the infant class End of chapter 25 Recording by John Brandon